Welcome back to The Musing Greek. Make sure you like and subscribe to stay across more great content like this. So today we're looking at what's inside a solar blanket. In this case, an Adventure King's 200 watt solar blanket. I've got a separate video going into detail on how I repaired this faulty blanket, but this is just a quick overview of what's inside and how they work. So this particular solar blanket is made up of six separate panels sewn into this woven bag. It's convenient because a solar blanket folds down into a nice compact size. But what makes it all work on the inside? Well, it's a simple matter to cut through the stitching and remove the bag from the panels. And once you've done that, you can see what's on the back of each panel and how the whole system works. Note that, of course, different panels may have slightly different configurations on the back. So you can see at the back of each panel here how there's two positive signs and two negative signs on each panel. That's because for the sake of getting the power output they required in a relatively compact size, the solar cells have actually been cut in half and then positioned next to each other, and the end of one panel has simply been joined to the start of the next. Otherwise, in this panel there would have only been three panels in total, but they'd be twice as long, which would mean you wouldn't be able to fold them up in the middle like you can with this one here. If you look at the front of one of these panels, you can see the two halves of the panel. There are two sets of wires running from one side to the other, and they are joined to these copper panels which are on the back of the blanket. These two wires here are the output from the panel to the solar regulator. So if we start from the negative wire and trace our way through, this is what we find. Power runs through this cell from the negative to positive. So it starts at the negative and runs through those wires on the other side of the blanket um, where they generate power. And at the other end, at the positive end, the wires are joined onto this copper plane. And the power then runs through this diagonal copper plane down to the negative terminal of the next cell. And the wires then run through that cell where more power is added to the system, and you end up at this point here, at the next positive panel. This is just like having two batteries joined end to end, and it doubles the voltage you get out of the whole system. The power then runs through this strip of braided tin copper wire to the next cell where it all happens again. At the end of the third panel, there's an insulated wire joining the power from one side of the blanket to the other side of the blanket, and then the whole process repeats itself all the way up to the positive wire. So in essence, in this solar blanket, you've got 12 separate batteries, if you like, or solar cells as they are, which are all wired up in series to provide the required electrical output. Now, because these solar cells are all connected in series, a fault in any one of these cells or in the wiring between them would mean that the whole system fails. If you can imagine a series of extension cords plugged into each other to power a computer or something that's located a long way from a power outlet, if you unplug one of those extension cords, no matter how much the others are connected, obviously no power is going to flow through that cable out to the computer. That's the same type of situation here with all these 12 solar cells wired in series. And that type of fault is basically what happened to me. One of the 12 solar cells failed, which meant the other 11 couldn't get that power through and the whole blanket had no power. So that's just a quick overview of how a solar blanket works. If you want to know more about how I found the fault in the first place on this particular blanket and what I did to largely resurrect this otherwise dead solar blanket, make sure you check out the full video on the solar blanket repair. Otherwise, have a great day and I'll catch you next time.